Hello, this is Mary Roddy from Charing Cross Hospital London and the UK OSARX user group and today's tutorial is aimed at uh, the trainees and consultants at Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust who want to prepare teaching cases for their own personal collection and also for the departmental museum. You'll know there are plenty of IMAX dotted around the department to allow you to prepare cases using OSARX and um, I know some of you also have Macintoshes at home. On the departmental uh, Macintoshes you'll find a museum survival kit and I just want to take you through the contents of that. First of all there's quite a useful step-by-step -step PDF document explaining how exactly to export DICOM or JPEG images directly from our GE Centricity packs. Please make sure that if you're going to do this you use a securely encrypted memory stick or external hard drive so that you comply with information governance guidelines. There is also another PDF which explains how to get rid of the Not For Medical Usage logo by inserting a plug-in into the latest version of Osirix. This is very helpful if you're going to use your cases for teaching and you don't want to be distracted by the logo. I've also um, enclosed a copy of the plug-in there if you need to install it. There's also a Word History Pro Forma where you can type in the age and sex of your patient as well as the relevant presenting history and also a separate word pro forma for the findings where you can list the relevant radiological findings, the diagnosis and the differential diagnoses if there are any. There's a PLIST file here uh, which will be relevant to those of you who are using your own computers at home. This encodes all the preference settings uh, that determine how the Macs at the hospital work uh, including the anonymization protocols and if you want your Mac at home to work the same way you may need to copy that PLIST file and insert it into your own SRX at home. And finally there is a list of the RCR modules um, for the examination and you can use these to code your cases and that may be useful for other trainees who want to revise for particular modules of the exam. So that's the content of the museum survival kit and please feel free to copy that and take it home if you need to. So what I'm going to do now is to show you how you might go about uh, preparing a case and on my external hard drive I've got a nice case of endobronchial TB with tree and bud opacification with a chest x-ray and a CT and I'm going to prepare a museum case from that. Now before I import the case I've prepared already a history sheet which I've saved as a PDF, a findings sheet which I've also saved as a PDF as well as a list of causes of tree and bud opacification and a nice review article from Radiographics from 2005 that is a very nice overview of all the different causes which I think will enhance this teaching case. So we're going to open OSIRIX now and I'm going to first of all press import. I'm going to point it at my external drive and I'm going to try and find that case. And here it is. So I'm going to open that and press copy files. Now that case is starting to come across into my database. You can see the progress bar down at the bottom left hand side of the screen and you'll see that this case it consists of a chest radiograph and a CT as well. Now the patient's name wasn't Bob Smith, that's a, a name I've given this particular patient to protect their identity for this teaching video, um, but I'm going to show you how we can anonymise uh, the patient using the anonymization protocols in OSARIX. So the first thing to know is that we can actually anonymise both the CT and the chest x-ray at the same time and if you click on anonymise having highlighted the cases you'll know that we have several 
different protocols for anonymization on the departmental max, I would choose personal museum because you're preparing the case first for yourself and then hopefully donating it to the museum afterwards. Now, what these anonymization protocols do, in case you're unaware of it, is that they delete all the patient-sensitive information where it says reset, and then we've given you some prompts for where you need to fill in the relevant information to label your case so that you don't lose any of this information should, for example, you use some other DICOM viewer rather than a Cyrex in the future. So the first thing to do is to assign the patient a name and by convention the SRX user group tends to use the first three letters of the Christian name followed by the first three letters of the surname followed by a hyphen and then a series of numbers. It's up to you entirely what you would like to use but you may choose to use that method. But if you do the most important message is that you need to put the same series of numbers into patient name patient ID and study instance UID. This will ensure that all the information pertinent to that patient shows up in one line of your museum. So let's keep this as Marod0001. I'll change the sex to male. <clears throat> now I could, if I wanted to, keep the hospital number to allow me to find the patient at a, at a later date if I needed to, if the diagnosis changed for example and I could keep in the date of birth as well, but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to take those out. We can put in um, chest x-ray and also a CT thorax here. The patient's age, which is 35, and the RCR module, which for lungs is 1D. There's our case anonymised, so we can now choose <coughs> either to add the anonymised case as a new line in our database or to replace the two lines that are already there. I tend to just add it in case I've done something daft um, and then uh, I feel a bit more secure. So the processing takes place, the case is now being anonymised and there is now an anonymised case in my database. So now it's probably sensible to delete the um, unanonymised data, which I'll do now. Right, so there's our case. I might just fill in a few of these. We tend to put the keywords in comments too. And I'll put the age and sex of the patient here. And I'll put the RCR code here. Now it's time to optimise the images and add in our supporting information to make this a good teaching case. So what I might do first of all is optimise the chest radiograph. So I'll probably crop it a little bit just to get rid of the white edge. And I'll get rid of the graphics and I'll now export that as a new image. So I might call that CXR. And now I can get rid of the original. And then regarding the CT, CTs tend to come across with a lot of extra information in the title. I prefer a nice short, concise title. So let's go back to that and rename it. So to rename it, we're going to export it as a new series. Remember, because it's a CT and it's got lots of images, we need to go all images of the series. And I'll go CT thorax and export that as a new series. Now for the museum, we do like to have the original thin sections uh, because we can do anything we like in terms of post-processing. I can make coronal reconstructions or sagittal reconstructions or 3D uh, imaging. Um, so I think it's nice to keep the original thin sections there but for teaching purposes, we might want to have a smaller number of images. So let's go back into opening that again and try and export it in a way that will reduce the number of images. So if we, we could maybe change the start position and the finish position. And then we could increase the interval. So we could copy every third or fourth image. That's 103 images. That's quite manageable. So let's do that. 
And now we've got, for teaching purposes, um, a much smaller set, which will be easier for a registrar to look at. Now, let's add in our supporting information now. So for that, we're going to go to the Plugins, Database, PDF to DICOM, and go back to my desktop. And the first thing I'll import in is the history. I'll now import in the findings. I'll now import in the list of causes of tree and bird pacification. And finally, I'm going to import in the radiographics article. So there are all my um, nice documents associated with this case. The final thing you might want to do is to maybe change the order. I might want to have this as the first image in the series, and I'll just show you how you want to. You can change the order of these um, series if you want to. You need to go to Metadata, turn on Editing, make sure you're only editing a series, and then you're going to look for your series number, which is here, and we're going to change that to 001 and then apply it and now that's going to show as the first image in the series. So we've now got a nice case uh, that you can import into your own museum and if necessary then give it to me and the museum coordinator we will quality assure it and if it's up to scratch we will um, insert it, give it a new museum number and insert it into the departmental museum. So what I've covered today is how to go about <clears throat> importing a case, anonymising it and preparing it for your own teaching collection or for the departmental museum. And if you have any queries, please don't hesitate to contact me. I hope you found that was useful. Thanks very much.